Uh, we're going to be picking up uh, this episode where we left off last episode. Uh, I started talking about I believe in him, but do I know him? So today we're going to be dealing with part two of that message. If you have not seen the first episode, I encourage you to do so because it will help you to understand some things that we're going to touch on in this episode. Uh, today we're going to be starting off in John 15 uh, at that first verse. And this is Jesus talking. He says, I am the true vine. And my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, that word bear means to bring forth or to give birth to. He says, and every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Verse 3 says, now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Jesus says, now you are clean through my message. And how many know that the Bible is his message, the Holy Scriptures? He says, listen, you are clean through this word. This is what's going to help you build that relationship with me. Verse 4 says, abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. Don't miss that. Abide in the vine. No more can ye except ye abide in me. That word abide means to remain, to continue, to stay, to submit. Now think about that. John 8 and 31 says, Jesus said to those Jews which believed on him to continue in my word. Then are you my disciples indeed. So abide means to continue in. Verse 5 says, I am the vine. We're getting confirmation from what we talked about last time here in these same scriptures. He says, I am the vine. Ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me ye can do nothing. And I just want to stop right there because Jesus makes a very bold statement. He says, apart from me, you can do nothing. And some people may scratch their head and say, wait a minute, apart, I know people that don't want to have nothing to do with Jesus. I know they ain't trying to build a relationship with him. They don't want to know him. And they seem to be accomplishing some great things. But what Jesus is saying here is that if you want to accomplish something that really matters on this earth, that really matters to God, it can only be done through me. The fruit that God desires can only be done through Jesus Christ. It can only be done through having a relationship in Him. It can only be done through abiding in Him. So that's why you got to make sure that you are abiding in Him, that you have that relationship in Him so that you can make sure you bring forth the fruit that really matters. That fruit in verse 16 is going to tell us later on that fruit that should remain or that God desires that it remains. But he says in verse 8, Herein is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. Now let's deal with that fruit, because I know some of you saying uh, Galatians 5, 22 and 23, it deals with the fruits of the Spirit. It says love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. So that's one way that we bring for fruit. Um, uh, uh, there's another. There's other scriptures in the Bible that talks about wisdom being fruit. Uh, but the fruit that I really want to talk about is when God uses us to bring people into the kingdom. Amen. When He uses us to bring people into the kingdom, He says that He desires that we bring forth fruit. And later on, like I said, I believe it's in. Uh, John 15 and 16, he talks about that, that fruit that should remain, that he, that's what he desires, that it's not only a fruit that's brought forth, but that it's a fruit that should me, remain. Uh, 2 Corinthians 5 and 17, it says, therefore, don't miss this first part, it says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, there that word is again. Every time we see it talking about us and him, it always talks about being in Christ, abiding in Christ. He says he is a new creature. In other words, when you are one with Christ, then you are a new creature because now you have surrendered yourself to your creator, the one that originally created you. We talked about that in the last episode. He made all things. So if he made you, if he was the manufacturer, who not better to go back to to be made over than the word himself, than Jesus Christ himself? It says old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. 
and all things are of God who have reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and have given to us the ministry of reconciliation. We talked about that in one of our previous episodes. He has given all of us a ministry, a service to do. When we are in Christ, when we are one with Christ, God says, listen, now I want you to go out there. This is your service to go out there, reconcile people back to me. Let them know that Jesus died. He was rose. He bridged the gap between man and God. Now you have an opportunity to finally come back to God, to stand boldly before God and say, listen, I want to make Jesus my Lord and Savior. I want to be reconciled back to you, God, through your son. But he says he give he gives us that ministry. But how can we minister reconciliation to somebody? How can we talk to somebody about Jesus if we don't know him? How can you truly talk to somebody and be confident of, of what it is that you're talking to them or who it is you're talking to them about if you don't know that person? Verse 19 says, to wit that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and have committed unto us the word of reconciliation. In other words, he have committed the message or the gospel of reconciliation. So if that's been committed to us, how is it uh, uh, are we going to uh, uh, minister that word or, or bring forth that word if we don't know the word for ourselves? If we don't know Christ for ourselves, it's basically saying the same thing. We have to understand that in order to truly reconcile people back to God, to truly preach the gospel, to truly go out there and spread that message, you have to know him for yourself. Because how many know when you are being led by the Holy Spirit, when you have the Holy Spirit dwelling within you, which is promised by Christ, how many know it begins to lead you on where to go, what area to go, what people to talk to, and, and let them know that Jesus Christ can save you. Come to him and you will be reconciled back to God. But that can only be done through a relationship. Remember the Bible says one plant, one waters, but God gives the increase. Let's look at what Luke 10 and 1 says. It says, after these things, this is confirmation, the Lord appointed other 70 also and sent them two and two before his face into every city and place. Watch this, whither he himself would go. One plant, one water, God gives the increase. It says Jesus sent them out two by two to every place where he would go. So how would they have known where to go, what places to go, if they had not had a relationship with him? That only came through relationship. They were able to receive instruction. They were able to do it right, go where they needed to go. And then Jesus followed after them and did what it was that he do. Amen. But the last verse, verse 20, it says, now then we are ambassadors for Christ. That word ambassador means we are messengers or we are representatives for Christ. As though God did beseech you by us. That word beseech means to make an urgent appeal. Basically, it's saying that God makes his urgent appeal through us, through the people that he sends us to, uh, to let them know that Jesus Christ is Lord and that God desires for them to be saved. He says, we pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. So here we see in the first two episodes, there's three benefits already from knowing Christ. One is he, he helps you to become uh, uh, one with the Son that, so that you can be freed, so that you no longer can be a servant to sin. Because he tells us, he said, who the Son sets free is free indeed. So that's one benefit of knowing him. Another benefit of knowing him or having a relationship with him is that we bring forth fruit, that fruit that matters. Because he tells us, listen, if you don't abide in me, if you don't continue in me, he says, apart from me, you can do nothing. That thing, that fruit that you're going to bring forth, if it's not through me, it's, it's not really going to matter. Only what you do for Christ will last. And thirdly, we see here that if you're going to do the ministry, the service of reconciliation, which God put all of us uh, uh, or, or gave all of us to do when we became one with Christ or when we made Christ our Lord and Savior, when we became one in Christ and became that new creature, he says, listen, you can only reconcile people back to me through relationship with Christ. Because how are you going to know who to talk to, when to talk to him, what to say if you're not one with Christ? So please stick with us. We're going to get into some more things. We're going to talk about those that thought they knew him, but they did not know him. And how could that have possibly happened? Listen, it's, we're going to get deeper and deeper. It's going to be good. So just keep sticking with me. Know that I love you. And until the next time, stay in the word. God bless you.